Let's now go live to our correspondent, uh, Paulus Lear, to see how the escalating conflict is affecting people there. Paula, what's the sentiment in Israel right now regarding the military stepping up the offensive? Well, we're just receiving news that Israel has issued an ultimatum to Hamas, saying that it has 36 hours in which to stop its firing of rockets, or else Israel will step up its operation. And those are the most ominous words we've heard so far that do suggest that the possibility of some kind of ground offensive could be imminent. When we talk about the effects of what has been happening since Wednesday in Israel, really it's residents of the southern cities and southern towns who've been in the receiving end of barrages of rockets. And again, this morning Monday there were a number of rockets that fell on southern Israel they landed in open spaces and there were no reports of injuries although there has been some buildings damaged three Israeli civilians have so far been killed roughly around a dozen have been injured we're looking at statistics of about a million Israelis who are living in a state of lockdown when you talk about the south of Israel these schools there have been shut businesses are closed and most people are choosing to stay at home out of fear that they will be caught by a the situation is such that from the time a siren sounds, people have 15 seconds to get to a bomb shelter. And if you look, for example, at the city of Starot, which is right on the Israeli-Gaza border, here you have bus shelters that are essentially bomb shelters and playgrounds where the toys are camouflaged, but they are essentially bomb shelters as well. So people are very nervous to be caught in the open streets. They use these bomb shelters for protection. Since Wednesday, more than 1,000 rockets have fell on Israel. The statistics we have are that 546 have landed and roughly around 602 have been shot down and intercepted. Residents in the south of Israel do want to see a ground offensive. They believe that this is the only way that the situation can be brought to book, although there is an understanding that if, if Israeli soldiers go into Gaza, you are going to see the Israeli count climb. We haven't yet had any kind of deaths or injuries of soldiers, but certainly this is likely to happen with a ground offensive. All right, Paul, as you just mentioned, there is a possibility of a ground offensive there, but is there an indication of uh, as to when this is likely to happen? Any hints, any information that you know so far in this? Well, people have been talking about an imminent ground offensive since Wednesday. We know that roughly 75,000 reserve soldiers have been called up. They and the regular army have been massing along the Israel-Gaza border. We have seen their movement of tanks and armored personnel vehicles for days now. There certainly is a sense, particularly because the army has closed off all roads around Gaza, that there is something on the go. There have, however, also been four straight days of rockets being fired into Tel Aviv. Now, I can tell you, having been in Tel Aviv when these rockets land, there is a moment of panic when people rush to bomb shelters, but almost immediately afterwards, the situation returns to normal and life carries on as if nothing has happened. However, speaking to people here in Tel Aviv, something has shifted. It's almost as if a red line has been crossed by militants who now have long-range Iranian-made missiles that reach as far into the country as Tel Aviv. And in in light of this, I'm hearing more and more Israelis say that they are supporting a ground offensive, that they believe it's the only way, only way that militants in Gaza can once and for all be dealt with. The problem, though, is that Tel Aviv is widely aware that if, in fact, it launches such an offensive, it will lose international sympathy. It's heard these warnings, particularly from the government of the UK. But Israel is relying on the United States, as it has in the past, to back it up. We're also hearing more and more many Israelis voice the opinion that they believe that Gazans are not innocent. And this comes from the point of view that we're looking at a rising civilian death count in Gaza. What I'm hearing Israelis tell me is that it is Gazans that elected the Hamas government and as a result, they need to live with the consequences. This is almost a justification for the Israeli army getting it wrong so frequently now in what it says are targeted killings, but in fact, when it lands up hurting and killing civilians. All right, Paul, thanks very much indeed for bringing us uh, the latest sentiment from the ground. Our Middle East correspondent, Paul Slee, live from Tel Aviv.